first question. You have been always been in working in cycles, like the drawing restraint cycle, which is open end, like the Cremaster. Um, and you always had many years between the cycles. So uh, how long did you prepare uh, readout? How long have you been, uh, be even before the shooting? Hmm. Um, I mean, I think it's a little bit of both. I think um, on one hand, Redoubt um, had perhaps a, a three-year production, um, like a year of pre-production, a year of filming, and a year of post-production. In that sense, it's very um, traditional, I would say, and it's um, in terms of its uh, production time. Um, you know, I think the Cremaster cycle, you know, I think in my mind has it had a lot to do with the the, the concept of land art and the the non-site and 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 its relationship to these locations was very specific and um, and so as such I think the scale of Cremaster from the very beginning you know had a much um, broader scope and so too was the case with River of Fundament. Um, not so much by way of, of land art, but by way of opera. You know, I think when the the idea of making River of Fundament began, um, it was always about making um, an evening length piece um, on an operatic scale. And um, so, so its longer duration was always the intention and um, And Redoubt is different. You know, I think Redoubt comes out of uh, an interest I have in landscape painting and the representation of the landscape, and particularly the American landscape. And um, and so, you know, it, it scale was not um, cinematic scale was not necessarily the um, one of the sort of primary concerns for the piece. I think it was. It was more about the challenge of making um, a work in that in that landscape, which was was not easy. But um, um, you know, I think I started without any um, ideas about how long it necessarily would be, or um, the sort of general scale that it would have relative to some of the longer projects I've made. Um, you said it's about the representation of American landscape. Is it? Do I get it right? It's, it's it's about the representation or about the landscape itself, the nature, the notion um, of nature. I mean, I think that that Redoubt is very much a, um, in my mind, it's a uh, it's a portrait of that place. It's a um, it attempts to kind of capture the character of that place, um, and and I think. In terms of the American tradition of landscape, that's complicated, uh, and it's still complicated. You know, it's complicated to go to a place and try to um, make an aesthetic picture of a place when the poli politics are so intertwined with um, with the the geology, even. And um, I think that was true from the very beginning when the American West was first. Um, depicted in 19th century paintings and um, and the Native Americans were erased and um, you know it's a, it's a complicated um, tradition
would you characterize, compared to River of Fundament, how would you describe uh, uh, Redoubt then? I mean, the opera is also, uh, River of Fundament was very, it was sometimes violent, it was disturbing, it was dark. Um, how would you describe Redoubt? Um, I mean, I would say that the violence is implicit. It's not as nearly as explicit. Um, you know, I think there is a violent in that violence in that landscape, and um, and certainly with regard to the wolf debate, you know, the topic of of the reintroduction of wolves into that area, and then the hunting of wolves in that area, um, and um, yeah, I you know I was interested again in making a kind of you know kind of character portrait of that area and including all of it, you know, including the, the good and the bad and the ugly. The, the protagonist you play uh, uh, is not hunting himself, the wolf. He's more yeah. hunted himself than the wolf is hunted. Yeah, he's also a, a bureaucrat. He's, um, he works for the, the United States Forest Service and he's just out doing his job, really. And so... His observations that he's making, um, you know, are both part of his 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 job as a, a forest ranger and and also part of his interest as an artist. But I think maybe the deeper question for me there is about what it means as an artist to possess uh, your material and to, and to what degree you can possess what it is that you're looking at. Um, I'm, I think I've always been interested in that question, how uh, whether an artist owns what they're, um, what they're seeing and what they're making. And... Um, And I think the same question could be asked about <clears throat> land management um, and the possession of, of land and the management of land, the ownership of land. Um, you, your protagonist is the only male protagonist surrounded by women. Um, how, how do you explain that? Because there is a... Uh, reference to Diana, of course, to the mythology, to the Greek mythology also. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I think, as we were just speaking, I think that the, these questions about land management, I, I, I definitely wanted to tackle this subject, um, but to do so in a, in a rather indirect way, I thought uh, the Diana stories became quite useful in that way, um, that... Um, you know, Diana, in a certain way, is a land manager. Um, mm. You know, she she goes out and hunts the land, and she comes back with piles of of dead animals. And you have no idea when you see these fo these p paintings of uh, Diana next to a, a, a pile of dead animals. Who are they for? And mm. what role is she playing? Like, why does she kill? And um, and 
I think um, I thought it would be a way of um, thinking about the wolf topic in, in central Idaho um, and about land management in general um, without having to get stuck in a kind of political artwork. Um, and I wanted to think about it in a more universal way. And, um, um, and, and so Diana became very useful. And of course, Diana has her, her, uh, ba her bathers or her um, virgins who she protects, uh, along with the animals that she both protects and kills. Um, and so I started um, populating the story with these characters and, um, and then became interested in the Acteon story um, and, um, and decided that this um, forest ranger um, who observes the landscape and who makes drawings of the landscape would also um, relate to the character of Acteon as a uh, as a as one who who comes upon Diana and and um, transgresses um, um, by um, you know looking upon her and uh, spying on her and um, um, so yeah this is where the, the the casting began because I never understood. In Greek mythology, why, for instance, you have to be virgin to be a hunter? Uh, and why, if uh, the, the, the old cliche of, of mankind is always that the man is the one who is hunting and the, the wife stays at home? And this is a complete inversion of it and linked also to purity, being virgin, to be able to be allowed to hunt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting what you're saying. How um, how historically this is um, um, it's hard to understand. Yeah, I, I, is there a question there though? No, I just I just thought that maybe you can help me understand the old Greek mythology <laughs> at this point about the relation of innocence and hunting and violence, which is very rich and very complex. And why is it the, the innocent f f uh, female who has the right to hunt and who is the goddess? Yeah. I mean, I think that the, the, the Diana myths are a, are, are a riddle for me, and I think it's why I'm interested in working with them. I really don't understand completely why, um, for example, why she kills what she holds sacred. And... Um, Yeah, I think this is this is um, typical for me. I think that my subject matter works for me only if 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 I if there's an aspect of it which I do not understand, and, um, and mm. that's definitely the case with Redoubt. Although Redoubt was made in a place not far from where I grew up, and um, and. You know, in the production, I was able to call upon a number of people I know from childhood. And um, so in a way, the production was quite easy for me um, to mobilize and to gain access to the locations I needed. But um, there's another aspect of the, to the story, um, which I, you know, I still don't completely understand. A subject forbidden beauty. What is be what does it mean to you, beauty? What would be the definition which is closest to you? I mean, I think that I find so many things beautiful that it would be hard for me to d define it in any narrow way. And I think, um, 
you know, I think that there are um, ways in which that my work depends on relationships between things as much as it depends on any one thing. Um, there's not a lot of autonomy in any one piece or in any one character within a piece for me. Like the the system of characters and the relationships between them are really much more um, uh, of interest to me. So I think in saying that, I think um, that complexity is very beautiful to me. Um, you know, but so too is is simplicity, and I think maybe the tension between those two things is um, is a, a a beauty personally that uh, I'm uh, interested in. Um, um, I'm interested in setting up a um, a narrative or a a project that puts those two things in tension. You say that you come out of a project transformed. Uh, is is your life as an artist a sort of diary of your life as a person? I don't think of my works as autonomous, the way that art it tends to be defined as um, an autonomous thing. I am more interested in the relationship between the pieces and within any given piece, the relationship between the elements in the piece. Um, so. Mm -hmm. In that sense, yes, I think it's about, you know, you could say the same thing about life, that life is about the relationships one has. And um, and um, and I think I, ha I have that relationship to my work, for sure, that, um, that it's about a continuity, um, that it isn't about creating discrete works. Since Cremaster, you have invented uh, uh, many different kinds of filmmaking. You have experienced the limits of filmmaking. You have uh, discovered new techniques. Here now in Redoubt, what do you think you learned about filmmaking from Redoubt? For instance, there are many drone scenes. Uh, but but is there something because we, we talked in the beginning about the difficulty to capture this landscape mm -hmm. by the camera and by filmmaking? So is there something you would say you you have learned about the technique of filmmaking or, or, or filmmaking in general? Well, I mean certainly. I mean every project is in education in that way. But I think. Um, I mean, I th looking back on that production, you know, I can certainly cite specific um, instances where, as you pointed out, the drone, for example, was used sometimes to try to um, to create a more kind of predatory perspective. Um, it was used in a more conceptual way, and sometimes it was simply used because we could not get the camera through the deep snow. And we used it like a tripod, um, where we couldn't place it. Yeah. Um, so I think there was a lot of um, there was a lot of uh, you know meaningful learning that happened in that environment. But um, but I think another takeaway from that project is really that um, um, as much as I in previous years had turned away from the filmmaking um, endeavor. Um, and I was thinking more about live performance throughout the River of Fundament uh, yeah. Yeah. I Coming back to a more purely cinematic approach with Redoubt was, um, I think it just, it, it, it proved to me that it can still be very engaging to me and, um, and, uh, and very satisfying as a way of working. So. Uh, it's a very simple question to your answer, but um, I think I learned uh, that about myself, that sometimes it's okay to um, tell us a, uh, a simple story in, in one location and not um, have to um, create a more complex uh, system than that.